the second major technological breakthrough was dubbed Super Cruise. To reach supersonic speeds, current fighters must use their afterburners. This boosts the power of their engines, but at the cost of higher fuel consumption. Super Cruise offers supersonic flight with lower engine power, called military power. The real benefit there in Super Cruise, the way I look at it, is probably twofold. It allows me to get from eight hour below and not afterburner. My IR signature, infrared signature, the airplane's reduced. So that, that one factor would reduce some of my threat envelope. Also, um, the speed, as it increases, allows less time for threats either airborne. Both the YF-22 and YF-23 were rigorously tested at Edwards to see if they met the demanding requirements for a new ATF fighter design. Three were rigorously tested at Edwards to see if they met the demanding requirements for a new ATF fighter design. Both designs satisfied these provisions. The YF-22 was ultimately selected as the winning contender for the Air Force's next fighter. The Air Force had designated it the F-A-22 Raptor to reflect the aircraft's multi-role capabilities. The Raptor remained in test at Edwards to finalize the design before production began. Each of the test missions was meticulously planned to make certain its configuration was optimal. With only a handful of prototypes on hand in the early testing phase, the loss of a single plane could have set the program back by months. Colonel Rickerson describes a typical early test mission for the F-22. We would start out early in the morning of the day of. Obviously, a lot of time and effort went in a previous day planning, mission planning. But the day of, we uh, get together in a mass briefing, probably 50 or so contractors and uh, Air Force representatives at the briefing, going over every aspect of the briefing. A lot of effort has gone in, into planning and making every detail of the flight very precisely controlled. Uh, when we're finished with this briefing, then we have a, a more... Uh, a smaller group of individuals will get together the actual flight themselves and brief up specific portions of the mission. Run out to the airplane, crank up and taxi, uh, and uh, the actual takeoff will uh, normally be preceded by the chase airplane doing a takeoff. the advanced features incorporated in the Raptor design. There was some worry that it might be too much for the pilot to handle once it reached squadron service. Test pilots not only have to determine whether a plane flies as intended, but whether the interface between man and machine succeeds. little practice, very little practice at all, wouldn't have any trouble. It's not a difficult airplane at all to fly, and it's designed that way. It's not supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be easy to fly. Flying the airplane is second nature, and now I'm worried about the mission a lot more. I'm spending my time worrying about uh, the people that are out there as a threat, people that perhaps are behind me as a threat, and that's what the airplane's set up to do. The popular image of the test pilot is of a brave adventurer using his wits to fly dangerous and experimental aircraft on risky missions. Airplanes have evolved and so too has the right stuff. It takes great courage, superior flying ability and a variety of other exceptional skills to be one of today's top test pilots.